What's up traders? I want to take a look at Enterprise Product Partners, ticker symbol EPD. But before we get started, I'd like to remind you this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. So obviously energy was the big thing last year and a lot of people either got into the trade a little too late, got out a little too late, or just missed it altogether. But I don't think it's necessarily over just yet. Even if oil and net gas prices continue to drop, Obviously, the future is uncertain, but in my opinion, there's a strong case to be made for why energy going forth is just going to cost more. Whether it's increased input costs for labor or diesel, or even just sustained inflation for the next, you know, decade or so, there's a very high probability that hydrocarbons or energy in general is just going to be more expensive. So a good way to bet on that is producers and service providers in that industry. So that's why today we're going to be taking a look at Enterprise Product Partners LP. It's a provider of midstream energy services to producers and consumers of natural gas, natural gas liquids, crude oil, and petrochemicals, as well as refined products. Now you can go ahead and check out the actual company and take a look and see if it's something you're interested in. But today I want to look at the charts and we're actually going to take a quick look at my second favorite F word. That's right, fundamentals. While we typically focus on the technicals of an actual chart or company, stock, or crypto, occasionally the fundamentals can be very important. And it just so happens that today is a very important day. So if you're watching this anytime into the future other than today, well, some of this information may not be as relevant, but also we can see how it plays out in real time. So before we actually build a case based on the technicals, we're actually going to jump over and look at the fundamentals really quick. So I'm going to click down here on the little dividend tab, and we can see that the X date is Thursday the 27th, which is tomorrow. So that means that if we want to get a hold of this sweet, sweet dividend, all we have to do is buy before that day. So today. And in this case, we'll see that EPD is currently trading at $26.75. And the dividend payment that is set to be made for anyone that owns the stock by tomorrow is 49 cents. And I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but 50 cents on a $26.76 stock actually is closer to like 2%. So let's jump in here real quick and take a look at what we can expect. So here's the dividend chart for EPD and full disclosure, I want to tell you right now that actually because this is in the energy sector that we did see a substantial cut in the dividend back in 2014. So while from 2016 to 2022, we're going to see that the dividend has been consistently rising at a nice steady pace. We know that if we do go into a deep recession or global depression or whatever end of the world scenario people are calling for, there's a good possibility that they will cut their dividend in half once again. So that being said, I just want to make sure that we understand that is always a risk. In this case, we're seeing roughly from 2022 that the dividend per share was $1.88, which is about 7.79% or an 8% dividend, which is substantially higher than most things you're going to find even in this space. So if we do just kind of look back though, we'll see it was a buck 80 in 2021, a buck 78 in 2020, a buck 75, a buck 72, a buck 67, a buck 59. So we know roughly what to expect about three or four cent increase over the course of a year. And if we get paid roughly 50 cents per quarter and we times that out by a year, we're looking at a roughly $2 dividend next year, AKA 2023 which is obviously pretty good when we look at the stock price of $25. If we just jump over to the overview tab real quick, we can see that the market cap is 58 billion. We can see the dividend yield is roughly 7.36%. Price to earnings ratio is about 10.67. Earnings per share is about 251. The company was founded in 1998 and we see about 35% of the stock is closely held. And again, if we just jump down here and look at a little bit of the historic information, 2018 price to earnings was about 13 and price to sales was about 1.5 and it slowly ticked down after it peaked out. And now we're at about 9.75 price to earnings or 0.91 price to sales. So this thing is basically a cash cow making a ton of money and it's keeping about 10% of that via profits. And then if we look at the payout ratio right here, we can see that they're roughly paying out about 75% of those profits in 2022 in dividends. 
And in the past, we actually saw a couple times where in order to maintain that dividend, they actually paid out over 100% in profits. So obviously we don't know what's going to happen going forward into the future, but we know that they have cut their dividend in the past. We know that they will take extraordinary measures to not cut their dividend if possible. So we do want to count on the dividend, but at the same time, we want to keep that in mind that it is a potential risk that it could be cut going forward. So let's look at this now. If we're currently getting an 8% dividend on this stock and it's trading at 26.76, well, what if the stock fell by 50% in value and the dividend stayed the same? Well, instead of the stock being $26, it would be $13. And instead of the dividend yield being about 8%, it would be 16%. So the major risk that we have to look at is if we're buying something for the big dividend, well, what if they cut the dividend in the future? Or what if they don't cut the dividend, the dividend stays the same, but the stock price gets cut in half? Well, of course, that's always going to be a risk. So let's take a look at the technicals and see what they're telling us. So there's obviously quite a bit going on on this chart, but basically these red vertical lines just mark the X dividend date. So we can see, okay, does the price immediately fall after the X dividend date every time? So sure, we capture that 2% dividend, but then the stock price crashes by more than that. So we might as well just wait till after the dividend X date and then get into it. Well, there's definitely a possibility. And we do see that the stock has been lately topping out around that X dividend date, but it's not like it just falls off a cliff the next day. So we can kind of eliminate that fear out of there, uh, but there's always still a possibility. So now if we look at the actual chart here, we'll see that the main range we're looking at is from the Rona dump in March of 2020. And we basically have this white support here and this orange resistance. And we've been essentially just trading inside that tightening range. But now here we are up in this area and we were sort of forming a descending triangle right here. And then we actually broke out of the triangle, came back and retested the breakout and then started to creep up. We put in another short-term top right here, came back down, found support around that white support line. And now here we are pushed up past that previous high again, and we're now back testing it. So the real question is, what would this thing do to look nasty and what would it do to look good? Well, if it broke down into the range and lost this sort of ascending white support line right here, we wouldn't really want to be in this anymore because likely it's going to start to correct this entire move up right here. But if we do consolidate above this level, more likely than not, if we continue to the upside, we're probably going to have a retest of the top level of the channel or potentially from the recent high here at 28.69 to the recent low and we're in internal retracement. So we currently made it up to the 7.86. Once we get up to the 7.86, come back down, find support. If we continue to the upside, our next target obviously would be a double top potentially or the 1.236 Fibonacci extension. So that gives us a roughly 14% upside with a 6.6% downside. So it's about a two to one risk reward ratio. We'll see we're above both 200 moving averages and they're both sloped to the upside. So we are in a bull market. And then if we complete that first setup, the next setup would be to the 1.618 and that would give us 24% upside with 3.57 risk reward ratio. And then finally, if things really got out of control, uh, we would be looking at the back test target from the all time highs of the 886, which is about $35. And while we don't want to count on that, it's definitely some potential. So now that we sort of looked at what's been going on here recently, let's look at the big picture and see what's actually going on. So this thing has went absolutely parabolic since 1999, but it topped out here in 2014. Very, very similar to just about everything else in the energy space. And while I typically talk a lot of trash about things that aren't putting in an all-time high per cycle, realistically, the energy cycle is a little bit different than like the typical economic cycle. So there's a lot of really good stocks that haven't put in a new all-time high since 2014, including the underlying assets as well. So if we just turn back on our drawing tools here and just look at this super basic, we have a yellow resistance here from our two points. We have a green support right here. And then we were essentially like consolidating in this little wedge pattern right here and eventually broke down. And that was right around September of 2019. This thing started falling off a cliff right into the Rona dump. So now if we take from the high right here to that Rona dump low, we can see that we have made it back up above the 618 and we've been consolidating at that level. So the next push up would likely take us to the 786, which was a very tough resistance up here. And you'll see we have a red horizontal as well. 
uh, for like the potential resistance. So somewhere around like 30 to $31, we would expect our next price target to be. And that corresponds with the trade setup that we talked about earlier. It would also correspond with this green support that we broke down from, back tested, and then we're consolidating. So another push up here would likely target somewhere around that area. So what about monthly moving averages? The 200 simple moving average is above the 200 exponential. And while they're both blue and trending to the upside, we do have to be careful because obviously the 200 simple being on top shows that the strength or momentum of the trend is waning. But of course, that's what we would expect after you know falling off a cliff from 2014 to 2020. So what if we switch over to the weekly here? Well, we'll see on the weekly, this is actually starting to look really good. The 200 exponential has just crossed above the 200 simple. The 200 simple is basically flat, very close to having a blue slope. And this is typically what the beginning of a new bull market looks like. Now we do need to pay attention to the very similar signature that we saw right here. The 200 exponential crossed above the 200 simple. Later, the 200 simple flipped blue as well. We pushed to a new high after breaking through that range. And then that ended up being a throw over or a failed breakout. We broke back down, retested the lows, put in a lower high, and then we fell off the cliff. So we do wanna be very, very careful. This little area right here looks very similar to what's happening right now. So there is always a risk that we do get another throw over or failed breakout and capitulate down and start retesting this range right here. And that's why we need to have our stop loss in place. If we lose this sort of like ascending trend kind of parabola that I had put here, break down below and start taking out these previous lows, we don't want to be in this trade anymore. If we lose the 200s, we don't want to be in this trade anymore. And then we can reevaluate once we see where we find some support at. So for right now, as long as we're continuing to the upside, this looks good. We're above the 200s, momentum in its favor. And if we just flip back to the daily real quick, we'll see again, 200 exponential getting ready to cross above the 200 simple and starting to build up some positive strength. So while I don't think this thing is going to be some just absolute home run that just quadruples in value and pays out massive dividends till the end of time, there's definitely some opportunity here away from some of the bigger plays. And if we look at another stock in the similar space, we're likely getting somewhere closer to like 2% dividends as where this thing is paying like 8%. So a massive difference. So the last thing I want to do is just put a fib down here at the bottom of the range and we'll just put it up here to the top of the range here. And we'll see that when we broke down, we never quite made it to the 236. And you guys know that the 236 is sort of like my confirmation for when we can start looking at deeper retraces. So as long as we're still above that 236, we haven't technically confirmed that we can start valid fibs. And also we haven't confirmed that this is going to be a lower high. So I want to still give this thing a shot to put in a new high and continue to the upside. But we have a very clear defined area for when we're just not really interested in this thing. And it's going to look like a serious breakdown. So losing the ascending support line in white right here is going to make us cautious. And we don't really want to be in the trade then. But the real line in the sand is if we take out this sort of like $23 level, tag that 236 and then we're really looking for much deeper retraces back down here to like 20 bucks so it's very important that when we look at this we say there is a real possibility that from where we're at right now this thing could easily lose 33 percent of its value so the last thing we want to do is put in our principal lose 33 percent of the value in order to get an eight percent dividend so in this case, the real question is, well, why are we in a rush to jump right in and get that quick little dividend payment when we know that there's a good possibility it actually is going to sell off afterwards and we'll be able to get it for 2% cheaper or something along those lines. In this case, maybe it sells back off to the bottom of the range, 6 or 7%. So we buy in to get 2% and then we lose 7%. Well, that's not really good. But if we look at the actual trade setup here, we see that we have a two to one risk reward trade setup, which isn't a bad trade setup to begin with. But then when we couple in the 50 cent payment that we would be getting or the extra 2% on top of that, it actually makes this even more of a positive trade setup. So while I'm not going to be going in hand over fist on this one, buying up every little share of EPD I can get, uh, it's definitely worth taking a look. And I went ahead and pulled the trigger on this one. So is it possible that we see a sell off of two, five, or even 33%, hundred percent. But if we manage our risk accordingly, we keep our eyes on the prize here. I think there's a legitimate possibility that we could capitalize on this 8% dividend until the stock price rises and percentage wise, it's not as much, but I think realistically, unless we enter into a really deep recession or depression that we're not going to see them cut that dividend. And if that is the case, we're probably going to see it coming.
So I wouldn't go out there and sell off your kidney just yet to buy some extra EPD, but it might be worth throwing a couple of bucks in here, at least to keep us from losing our buying power to inflation. So anyway, just wanted to talk about this one. It's a little bit time sensitive at the moment if you're looking to grab up this dividend payment and it probably does have some short-term downside. So either way, I don't think you necessarily have to rush out and buy this thing, but it might not be a bad idea to look for an opportune moment to enter and park a little cash in this bad boy and grab that 8%. And in the event that we do actually see energy get more expensive going into the future, I don't think it's that crazy that this thing could be at new all-time highs within a few years. So you guys know it's never about certainties in these markets. It's always about probabilities. And I could see a strong case with a high probability that energy is more expensive going into the future. So if that does end up being the case, this thing should literally be printing billions and billions of dollars hand over fist. And we know based on their previous track record that they're just going to go ahead and send that money straight on down to the shareholders. And I just want to make sure that I get my share of it. So that's it. Just want to take a quick look at EPD. Talk about it real quick for anybody watching this video in real time. I give an opportunity to grab this dividend payment before the X date. Please remember this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile. So please do your own research and trade responsibly. So yeah, that's it for today. Just want to take a quick look at EPD enterprise product partners, a little bit of an energy play with a nice dividend, a good trade setup and some potential for actual upside potential as well. All right. Well, that was fun. Crypto Trend Trader, and I'll catch you on the flip side.